Tony Blair. Anthony Charles Linton Blair is a British politician who served as Prime Minister of the United Kingdom from 1997 to 2007 and leader of the Labour Party from 1994 to 2007. He remains the most recent Labour Party leader to have won a general election from 1983 to 2007. Blair was the Member of Parliament for Sedgefield. He was elected Labour Party leader in July 1994, following the sudden death of his predecessor, John Smith, who together with his predecessor, Neil Kinnock, had started to move the party closer to the political centre, in the hope of winning power. Under Blair's leadership, the party used the phrase, New Labour, to distance it from previous Labour policies and the traditional conception of socialism. Blair declared support for a new conception that he referred to as socialism, involving politics that recognized individuals as socially interdependent, and advocated social justice, cohesion, the equal worth of each citizen, and equal opportunity. Also referred to as the Third Way, critics of Blair denounced him for having the Labour Party abandon genuine socialism and accepting capitalism. Supporters, including the party's public opinion pollster Philip Gould, stated that after four consecutive general election defeats, from 1979 to 1992, the Labour Party had to demonstrate that it had made a decisive break from its left-wing past in order to win an election again. In May 1997, the Labour Party won a landslide general election victory, the largest in its history, allowing Blair, at 43 years old, to become the youngest Prime Minister since 1812. In September 1997, Blair attained early personal popularity, receiving a 93% public approval rating, after his public response to the death of Diana, Princess of Wales. The Labour Party went on to win two more elections under his leadership, in 2001, in which it won another landslide victory, and in 2005, with a reduced majority. In the first years of the new Labour government, Blair's government introduced the National Minimum Wage Act, Human Rights Act, and Freedom of Information Act. Blair's government also devolved power establishing the Scottish Parliament, the National Assembly for Wales, and the Northern Ireland Assembly. In Northern Ireland, Blair was involved in the 1998 Good Friday Agreement. Blair supported the foreign policy of the Bush administration, and ensured that the British Armed Forces participated in the 2001 invasion of Afghanistan and more controversially, the 2003 invasion of Iraq. Blair has faced criticism for his role in the invasion of Iraq, including calls for having him tried for war crimes and waging a war of aggression. In 2016, the Iraq inquiry criticized his actions and described the invasion of Iraq as unjustified and unnecessary. Blair also intervened militarily in Kosovo and Sierra Leone. Blair was succeeded as the leader of the Labour Party and as Prime Minister by Gordon Brown in June 2007. On the day that Blair resigned as Prime Minister, he was appointed the official special envoy of the Quartet on the Middle East, an office which he held until May 2015. He now runs a consultancy business and has set up various foundations in his own name, including the Tony Blair Faith Foundation earliest years. Anthony Charles Linton Blair was born in Edinburgh, Scotland, on 6 May 1953. He was the second son of Leo and Hazel Blair. Leo Blair was the illegitimate son of two entertainers, and adopted as a baby by Glasgow shipyard worker James Blair and his wife, Mary. Hazel Corscadden was the daughter of George Corscadden, a butcher and Orangeman who moved to Glasgow in 1916. In 1923 he returned to Ballyshannon, County Donegal. In Ballyshannon Corscadden's wife, Sarah Margaret, 
gave birth above the family's grocery shop to Blair's mother, Hazel. Blair has one elder brother, Sir William Blair, a high court judge, and a younger sister, Sarah. Blair's first home was with his family at Paisley Terrace in the Willowbray area of Edinburgh. During this period, his father worked as a junior tax inspector whilst also studying for a law degree from the University of Edinburgh. Blair's first relocation was when he was 19 months old. At the end of 1954 Blair's parents and their two sons moved from Paisley Terrace to Adelaide, South Australia. His father lectured in law at the University of Adelaide. It was when in Australia that Blair's sister Sarah was born. The Blairs lived in the suburb of Dulwich close to the university. The family returned to the UK in summer 1958. They lived for a time with Hazel's mother and stepfather at their home in Steps on the outskirts of northeast Glasgow. Blair's father took employment, lecturing at Durham University, thus moving the family to Durham, England, aged five. This marked the beginning of a long association Blair was to have with Durham. Education With his parents basing their family in Durham, Blair attended Chorister School from 1961 to 1966, aged 13. He next was sent to spend his school term time boarding at Fettis College in Edinburgh from 1966 to 1971. Blair is reported to have hated Fettis. His teachers were unimpressed with him. His biographer, John Rental, reported that, all the teachers I spoke to when researching the book said he was a complete pain in the backside, and they were very glad to see the back of him. Blair reportedly modeled himself on Mick Jagger. During his time there he met Charlie Falconer, whom he later appointed Lord Chancellor leaving Fettis at the age of 18. Blair next spent a year in London attempting to find fame as a rock music promoter. Then in 1972, at the age of 19 he enrolled for university at St. John's College, Oxford, reading jurisprudence for three years. As a student, he played guitar and sang in a rock band called Ugly Rumors and performed some stand-up comedy including parodying James T. Kirk as a character named Captain Kink. He was influenced by fellow student and Anglican priest Peter Thompson, who awakened his religious faith and left-wing politics. While Blair was at Oxford, his mother Hazel died of cancer, which greatly affected him. He graduated from Oxford at the age of 22 in 1975 with a second-class honours BA in jurisprudence. Blair then became a member of Lincoln's Inn and enrolled as a pupil barrister. He met his future wife, Cherie Booth, at the Law Chambers founded by Derry Irvin, 11 King's Bench Walk, Chambers. Early Political Career Blair joined the Labour Party shortly after graduating from Oxford in 1975. In the early 1980s, he was involved in Labour politics in Hackney South in Shoreditch, where he aligned himself with the soft left of the party. He put himself forward as a candidate for the Hackney Council elections of 1982 in Queensbridge Ward, a safe Labour area, but was not selected. In 1982, Blair was selected as the Labour candidate in the safe Conservative seat of Beaconsfield, where there was a forthcoming by-election. Although Blair lost the Beaconsfield by-election, and Labour's share of the vote fell 10 percentage points, he acquired a profile within the party. In contrast to his later centrism, Blair made it clear in a letter he wrote to Labour leader Michael Foote in July 1982 that he had come to socialism through Marxism and considered himself on the left. Like Tony Benn, Blair believed that Labour right was bankrupt, socialism ultimately must appeal to the better minds of the people. You cannot do that if you are tainted over much with a pragmatic period in power. Yet, he saw the hard left as no better, saying, with a general election due 
Blair had not been selected as a candidate anywhere. He was invited to stand again in Beaconsfield, and was initially inclined to agree, but was advised by his head of Chambers Derry Irvin to find somewhere else which might be winnable. The situation was complicated by the fact that Labour was fighting illegal action against planned boundary changes, and had selected candidates on the basis of previous boundaries. When the legal challenge failed, the party had to rerun all selections on the new boundaries. Most were based on existing seats. But unusually in County Durham a new Sedgefield constituency had been created out of Labour voting areas which had no obvious predecessor seat. The selection for Sedgefield did not begin until after the 1983 election was called. Blair's initial inquiries discovered that the left was trying to arrange the selection for Les Huckfield, sitting MP for Nuneaton who was trying elsewhere. Several sitting MPs displaced by boundary changes were also interested in it. When he discovered the Trimden branch had not yet made a nomination, Blair visited them and won the support of the branch secretary John Burton and with Burton's help was nominated by the branch. At the last minute, he was added to the shortlist and won the selection over Huckfield. It was the last candidate selection made by Labour before the election, and was made after the Labour Party had issued biographies of all its candidates. John Burton became Blair's election agent and one of his most trusted and longest-standing allies. Blair's election literature in the 1983 UK general election endorsed left-wing policies that Labour advocated in the early 1980s. He called for Britain to leave the EEC as early as the 1970s, though he had told his selection conference that he personally favoured continuing membership and voted, yes, in the 1975 referendum on the subject. He opposed the exchange rate mechanism in 1986, but supported the urn by 1989. He was a member of the campaign for nuclear disarmament, despite never strongly being in favor of unilateral nuclear disarmament. Blair was helped on the campaign trail by soap opera actress Pat Phoenix, his father-in-law's girlfriend, at the age of 30 he was elected as MP for Sedgefield in 1983 despite the party's landslide defeat in the general election. In his maiden speech in the House of Commons on 6 July 1983, Blair stated, I am a socialist not through reading a textbook that has caught my intellectual fancy, nor through unthinking tradition, but because I believe that, at its best, Socialism corresponds most closely to an existence that is both rational and moral. It stands for cooperation, not confrontation, for fellowship, not fear. It stands for equality. Once elected, Blair's political ascent was rapid. He received his first front bench appointment in 1984 as assistant treasury spokesman. In May 1985, he appeared on BBC's Question Time arguing that the Conservative government's public order white paper was a threat to civil liberties. Blair demanded an inquiry into the bank of England's decision to rescue the collapsed Johnson Matthey Bank in October 1985. By this time, Blair was aligned with the reforming tendencies in the party, and was promoted after the 1987 election to the shadow trade and industry team as spokesman on the City of London. Leadership Roles In 1987, he stood for election to the Shadow Cabinet, receiving 71 votes. When Kinnock resigned after a further Conservative victory in the 1992 election, Blair became Shadow Home Secretary under John Smith. The old guard argued that trends showed they were regaining strength under Smith's strong leadership. Meanwhile, the breakaway SDP faction had merged with the Liberal Party. The resulting Liberal Democrats seemed to pose a major threat to the Labour base. Blair, the leader of the modernising faction, had an entirely different vision, arguing that the long-term trends had to be reversed. 
The party was too locked into a base that was shrinking, since it was based on the working class, on trade unions, and on residents of subsidized council housing. The rapidly growing middle class was largely ignored, especially the more ambitious working class families. They aspired to middle class status, but accepted the conservative argument that labor was holding ambitious people back with its leveling down policies. They increasingly saw labor in terms defined by the opposition regarding higher taxes and higher interest rates. In order to present a fresh face, and new policies to the elect new labor needed more than fresh leaders. It had to jettison outdated policies. The first step was procedural, but essential. Calling on the slogan, one member, one vote, Blair defeated the union element, and ended the block voting by which leaders of labor unions cast hundreds of thousands of votes on behalf of their members, and had an outsized voice in the party. Blair, and the modernizers called for radical adjustment of party goals by repealing Clause IV, the historic commitment to nationalization of industry that was achieved in 1995. Opposition leader John Smith died suddenly in 1994 of a heart attack. Blair beat John Prescott and Margaret Beckett in the subsequent leadership election and became leader of the opposition. As is customary for the holder of that office, Blair was appointed a privy councillor. Labour was seen by The Guardian to be definitely socialistic since its first constitution was published in 1918, saying that support for the common ownership of the means of production and exchange in Clause IV of the party's constitution was decisive in making Labour a socialist party. Blair announced at the end of his speech at the 1994 Labour Party conference that he intended to replace this clause of the party's constitution with a new statement of aims and values. This involved the deletion of the party's stated commitment to the common ownership of the means of production and exchange, which was widely interpreted as referring to wholesale nationalization. At a special conference in April 1995, the clause was replaced by a statement that the party is democratic socialist, and Blair also claimed to be a democratic socialist himself in the same year. However, the move away from nationalization in the old clause IV made many on the left of the Labour Party feel that Labour was moving away from traditional socialist principles of nationalization set out in 1918, and was seen by them as part of a shift of the party towards new Labour. He inherited the Labour leadership at a time when the party was ascendant over the Tories in the opinion polls since the Tory government's reputation for monetary excellence was left in tatters by the Black Wednesday economic disaster of September 1992. Blair's election as leader saw Labour support surge higher still in spite of the continuing economic recovery and fall in unemployment that the Conservative government had overseen since the end of the 1990-92 recession. At the 1996 Labour Party conference, Blair stated that his three top priorities on coming to office were education, education, and education, aided by the unpopularity of John Major's Conservative government. New Labour won a landslide victory in the 1997 general election, ending 18 years of Conservative Party government, with the heaviest Conservative defeat since 1906. According to diaries released by Paddy Ashdown, during Smith's leadership of the Labour Party, there were discussions with Ashdown about forming a coalition government if the next general election resulted in a hung parliament. Ashdown also claimed that Blair was a supporter of proportional representation. In addition to Ashdown, Liberal Democrat MPs Menzies Campbell and Alan Beth were earmarked for places in the cabinet if the coalition was formed. Blair was forced to back down on these proposals, because John Prescott 
and Gordon Brown oppose the PR system, and many members of the shadow cabinet were worried about concessions being made towards the Lib Dems. However, after Blair became leader, these talks continued, despite virtually every opinion poll since late 1992 having shown Labour with enough support to form a majority. However, the scale of the Labour victory meant that there was ultimately never any need for a coalition. Prime Minister November 1999 Blair became the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom on 2 May 1997, serving concurrently as First Lord of the Treasury, Minister for the Civil Service and Leader of the Labour Party. The 43-year-old Blair became the youngest person to become Prime Minister since Lord Liverpool became Prime Minister at the age of 42 in 1812 with victories in 1997, 2001, and 2005. Blair was the Labour Party's longest-serving Prime Minister, the only person to date to lead the party to three consecutive general election victories. Northern Ireland In 1998 his contribution towards assisting the Northern Ireland peace process by helping to negotiate the Good Friday Agreement was widely recognized. Following the Omar bombing on 15 August 1998, by members of the Real Ira opposed to the peace process, which killed 29 people and wounded hundreds, Blair visited the County Tyrone town and met with victims at Royal Victoria Hospital, Belfast. Military Intervention and the War on Terror in his first six years in office Blair ordered British troops into battle five times, more than any other Prime Minister in British history. This included Iraq in both 1998 and 2003, Kosovo, Sierra Leone and Afghanistan. The Kosovo War, which Blair had advocated on moral grounds, was initially a failure, when it relied solely on airstrikes, the threat of a ground offensive convinced Serbia's Slobodan Milosevic to withdraw. Blair had been a major advocate for a ground offensive which Bill Clinton was reluctant to do, and ordered that 50,000 soldiers, most of the available British army, should be made ready for action. The following year, the limited Operation Palliser in Sierra Leone swiftly swung the tide against the rebel forces. Before deployment, the United Nations mission in Sierra Leone had been on the verge of collapse. Palliser had been intended as an evacuation mission, but Brigadier David Richards was able to convince Blair to allow him to expand the role. At the time, Richards' action was not known and Blair was assumed to be behind it. Blair ordered Operation Barris a highly successful Shash parachute regiment strike to rescue hostages from a Sierra Leone rebel group. Historian Andrew Marr has argued that the success of ground attacks, real and threatened, over air strikes alone was influential on how Blair planned the Iraq War, and that the success of the first three wars Blair fought played to his sense of himself as a moral war leader. When asked in 2010 if the success of Palliser may have emboldened British politicians to think of military action as a policy option, General Sir David Richards admitted there might be something in that. Shake hands after their press conference in the East Room of the White House on 12 November 2004, from the start of the War on Terror in 2001. Blair strongly supported the foreign policy of George W. Bush, participating in the 2001 invasion of Afghanistan and 2003 invasion of Iraq. The invasion of Iraq was particularly controversial, as it attracted widespread public opposition and 139 of Blair's MPs opposed it. As a result, he faced criticism over the policy itself and the circumstances of the decision. Alastair Campbell described Blair's statement that the intelligence on WMDs was, beyond doubt as, his assessment of the assessment that was given to him. 
In 2009, Blair stated that he would have supported removing Saddam Hussein from power even in the face of proof that he had no such weapons. Playwright Harold Pinter and former Malaysian Prime Minister Mahathir Mohamad accused Blair of war crimes. Testifying before the Iraq inquiry on 29 January 2010, Blair said Saddam was a monster, and I believe he threatened not just the region, but the world. Blair said that British and American attitude towards Saddam Hussein had changed dramatically after the 11th of September attacks. Blair denied that he would have supported the invasion of Iraq even if he had thought Saddam had no weapons of mass destruction. He said he believed the world was safer as a result of the invasion. He said there was no real difference between wanting regime change and wanting Iraq to disarm. Regime change was U.S. policy because Iraq was in breach of its U.N. obligations. In an October 2015 CNN interview with Fareed Zakaria, Blair apologized for his mistakes over Iraq war and admitted there were elements of truth to the view that the invasion helped promote the rise of ISIS. The Chilcot Inquiry Report of 2016 gave a damning assessment of Blair's role in the Iraq war. Though the former Prime Minister again refused to apologize for his decision to back the U.S.-led invasion. Relationship with Parliament One of his first acts as Prime Minister was to replace the then twice-weekly 15-minute sessions of Prime Minister's questions held on Tuesdays and Thursdays with a single 30-minute session on Wednesdays. In addition to PMQs, Blair held monthly press conferences at which he fielded questions from journalists, and from 2002 broke precedent by agreeing to give evidence twice yearly before the most senior Commons Select Committee, the Liaison Committee. Blair was sometimes perceived as paying insufficient attention both to the views of his own cabinet colleagues and to those of the House of Commons. His style was sometimes criticized as not that of a prime minister and head of government, which he was, but of a president and head of state, which he was not. Blair was accused of excessive reliance on spin. He is the first British prime minister to have been formally questioned by police, though not under caution, while still in office. Events before resignation as the casualties of the Iraq war mounted, Blair was accused of misleading Parliament, and his popularity dropped dramatically. Labour's overall majority in the 2005 general election was reduced to 66. As a combined result of the Blair-Brown Pact, Iraq war and low approval ratings, pressure built up within the Labour Party for Blair to resign. Over the summer of 2006 many MPs, including usually supportive MPs, criticized Blair for his failure to call for a ceasefire in the 2006 Israel-Lebanon conflict. On 7 September 2006 Blair publicly stated he would step down as party leader by the time of the Trades Union Congress conference held 10-13 September 2007 having promised to serve a full term during the previous general election campaign. On 10 May 2007, during a speech at the Trimden Labour Club, Blair announced his intention to resign as Labour Party leader and Prime Minister at a special party conference in Manchester on 24 June 2007. He formally handed over the leadership of the Labour Party to Gordon Brown, who had been Chancellor of the Exchequer. Blair tendered his resignation on 27 June 2007, and Brown assumed office the same afternoon. Blair resigned his seat in the House of Commons in the traditional form of accepting the stewardship of the Chiltern Hundreds, to which he was appointed by Gordon Brown in one of the latter's last acts as Chancellor of the Exchequer. The resulting Sedgefield by-election was won by Labour's candidate, Phil Wilson. 
Blair decided not to issue a list of resignation honours, making him the first Prime Minister of the modern era not to do so. Social Reforms in 2001, Blair said, We are a left of center party, pursuing economic prosperity and social justice as partners and not as opposites. Blair rarely applies such labels to himself, but he promised before the 1997 election that new labor would govern from the radical center, and according to one lifelong Labour Party member, has always described himself as a social democrat. However, at least one left-wing commentator has said that Blair is to the right of center. A YouGov opinion poll in 2005 found that a small majority of British voters, including many new Labour supporters, place Blair on the right of the political spectrum. The Financial Times on the other hand has argued that Blair is not conservative, but instead a populist. Critics and admirers tend to agree that Blair's electoral success was based on his ability to occupy the center ground and appeal to voters across the political spectrum, to the extent that he has been fundamentally at odds with traditional Labour Party values. Some left-wing critics, such as Mike Markze in 2001, argued that Blair oversaw the final stage of a long-term shift of the Labour Party to the right. There is some evidence that Blair's long-term dominance of the centre forced his conservative opponents to shift a long distance to the left to challenge his hegemony there. Leading conservatives of the post-New Labour era hold Blair in high regard. George Osborne describes him as the master. Michael Gove thought he was entitlement to conservative respect in February 2003, while David Cameron reportedly maintained Blair as an informal advisor. During his time as Prime Minister, Blair raised taxes, introduced a national minimum wage, and some new employment rights introduced significant constitutional reforms, promoted new rights for gay people in the Civil Partnership Act 2004, and signed treaties integrating Britain more closely with the EU. He introduced substantial market-based reforms in the education and health sectors, introduced student tuition fees, sought to reduce certain categories of welfare payments, and introduced tough anti-terrorism and identity card legislation. Under Blair's government, the amount of new legislation increased which attracted criticism. Blair increased police powers by adding to the number of arrestable offenses, compulsory DNA recording and the use of dispersal orders. He did not reverse the privatization of the railways enacted by his predecessor John Major and instead strengthened regulation and limited fare rises to inflation plus 1%. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe below. Please like and subscribe below.